guys, it's April, so today I'm going to show you how to get this Lizzie Grant Lana Del Rey Cherry Galore inspired makeup. So I was inspired by this particular photo set, we're going to run through a few of those, um, of Lana Del Rey that she took in her early career, probably I would say like late 2000s. And I just, I love this hair and this makeup in this era of Lana. And I was really excited because I realized I had a very similar outfit. As you can see, I have the red gingham. I have this like navy bandeau and these like little cherry earrings. And I'm a <laughs> peroxide blonde at the moment with a really rooty look. Um, so I was like, you know what? I feel like I can accurately recreate this look. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, so basically, it's just like a really simple black smoky eye. I will say that Lana has very deep set eyes. So she kind of has that eye shape where you can like sweep a single color all over the lid and crease. And it looks like somebody took their time to craft a perfect little smoky eye. But it's just that their lids create natural dimension and depth. My eyes protrude a little bit and are slightly hooded, so I did have to approach this eye look a little bit differently so that I can kind of get similar highlights and depths like her eye. So um, if you're someone with deep set eyes, you can probably skip the last couple of eye steps. And if you're like me or your lids are even more hooded, you can just follow along. Just place everything a little bit higher than the crease. Um, but yeah, it's a really simple look. The skin is really light and understated. There's not a lot. You can see a lot of texture and your natural skin showing through. Um, a little bit of lip balm so that the lips aren't dry, but she doesn't really even look like she has much of a lip color going on. And then I show you how to get this hair, which is just kind of like curled away from the face and really simple. But yeah, I love it. It's a little trashy. It reminds me a little bit of the song Disco or My Only God, where she's like, black eyes, short dress, let's break it down. Anyways, you know the part. Um, I'm going to try to cover that song for this tutorial. Anyways, enough of me rambling. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get this makeup and hair. So stick around. I am taking a disappearing purple glue stick and I'm running this through my eyebrows. And with my fingers, I am just pinching the hairs so that my eyebrow looks much, much thinner. So this is a really cool way to give you the illusion of a super thin eyebrow without actually having to commit to it with a pair of tweezers. So yeah, just pinch them really, really tight together and um, until it's your desired thinness. With a makeup wipe, just wipe off any excess glue. And with a little concealer brush and some concealer a little bit lighter than my face shade, I am going to begin to trace underneath the eyebrow as close to it as possible. This is going to help further make it look even more thinner. So just trace it as close as you can and blend out any of the extra concealer onto the lid. With the same brush, I am now picking up a shade that's going to be a bit closer to my actual face shade. And once again, I am lining the top of my eyebrow this time as close as possible and then blending that out. And as you can see, it makes it look kind of penciled in and very, very thin. Next, I am taking a concealer that's a bit darker and warmer than my face shade and I'm just blending that onto my eyelid and bottom lash line as a bit of an eyeshadow base. I am taking a shader brush and a matte brown eyeshadow and I'm going to go ahead and apply this all over my eyelid and slowly sweep that into the crease, kind of focusing on the outer part of my eye towards the tail of my eyebrow and just making sure that you get a nice opaque covering of this. I am now taking that same brush and a Merlot colored eyeshadow and I'm applying this to the outer and mid part of my eyelid and a little bit on the outer corner blended up into the crease and I'm trying to keep the shape small like just in the crease I don't want to blow out this color too much I want to keep it mostly focused in the crease with a little shader angled brush I am taking a gray eyeshadow and I'm working this onto the outer part of my eyelid sweeping that into the crease once I get to the inner part of my eye, I actually want to make it a little bit close to where the eyebrow is at and that's going to give you like that doe-eyed effect. 
next and then I'm just gently blending the outer part of it I don't want to bring the color up too high with the same brush I'm picking up a matte black eyeshadow and just kind of reinforcing what we already laid down with the gray and with my finger I am picking a yellow gold eyeshadow and just tapping that onto my lid and then redefining my crease a little bit more so I get that kind of like deep set eye look without having to have deep set eyes I am taking this little tiny shader brush and some of the black and gray eyeshadow and I am smudging this into my bottom lash line. When I get to the inner corner of my eye though, I do want that to kind of actually go a little bit on the waterline. And then make sure that on the outer corner um, bottom lash line, you make that the thickest part and it's going to make your eyes look a little bit more doe-eyed. And then you take your uh, shader brush that you used earlier and just kind of make sure that the colors like match up together. Next, I'm taking a little pencil brush and some like shimmery silver eyeshadow and I'm applying that just underneath my arch on the brow bone, a little bit of white eyeliner for that doe eyed look, curl your lashes and apply some mascara to your top and bottom eyelashes. If you can, try to get your bottom eyelashes to look really spiky, but you basically just want to do a coat of eye uh, mascara. Next, I am taking a pair of flared eyelashes and putting them to my top lash line. No eyeliner, just the lashes. Once again, gives you that doe-eyed look. I am using a makeup wipe and removing any of the fallout. And now we're going to apply foundation. So I'm taking like a medium coverage foundation and I'm just dotting this over my face. I want to do a really, really thin veil of this on my face. I want my skin to still look really skin-like because her skin wasn't really perfect in, I mean, it was perfect, let's be real. But you could tell that you can see her skin texture and everything and freckles through her foundation. So uh, apply a tinted moisturizer or just a very light covering of this on your face. If you need a little extra coverage, feel free to do that. But you do want to keep the skin looking very skin-like as possible. Next, I'm taking a makeup wipe and just removing excess product off my lips. Next, I'm using a serum blush that's in like a brown pinky nude color and applying that to my cheeks and then a little bit over my nose, chin, and forehead. I like the serum blush because I feel like it keeps the skin looking like skin, but any blush within this color family will work well. Next, with a large powder brush and some loose translucent powder, I am just lightly dusting my face down, setting everything, but once again, I want my skin to kind of show through. And now I'm just applying a little bit of clear lip balm just to keep my lips moisturized, feeling soft. Moving on to the hair. So I am taking some dry shampoo and I am putting this into my hair. Even though I have clean hair, I do find that when you use dry shampoo, it allows your hair to tease a little bit bigger so it adds lots of volume. So go ahead and put that in, brush it through. I am giving myself a slightly off-centered part to kind of try to match her part. I don't know how close I got to that. Um, as you can see, it took me a couple of attempts. Um, when you're done doing that, just be sure to brush through your hair. Make sure that there are no knots or tangles because that's going to make it a little bit difficult to curl if there are tangles in the hair. Once again, working that dry shampoo in a little bit more. And now I am taking a heat protectant spray and I'm just spraying my hair a little bit, especially on the ends, and brushing that through to make sure that I'm distributing the product evenly. And a little bit more dry shampoo. My god, I love that dry shampoo, don't I? I am taking a hot curling wand that's about um, a half an inch to one and a half inches. And I am going to spiral wrap pieces of hair, maybe one to two inch sections, away from the face. And we're going to continue doing this until we get to like the back of the head, in which case we will alternate to the other side. But yeah, just spiral wrap it, hold it for about mm, 10 to 15 seconds, and you let that go. Once again, I am doing that to the other side of my head. Um... Yeah, just spiral wrapping it, making sure that the curls are going away from the face. Super easy. I love this curling wand. It works so quickly. I don't have to actually sit there forever. It takes me like five, ten minutes tops to curl my hair.
Now I'm going to get ready to curl the front sections. I'm just taking little pieces and once again curling those away from my face so you kind of get this swoopy little feathered out effect. And I'm also taking the curling wand and just wrapping some of the top sections just so I, I can get a little bit more volume there. Now this whole part was kind of unnecessary. I feel like I did a whole lot of stuff for absolutely no reason at all. Um, I would just suggest teasing the roots of your bangs instead of what I'm doing here. <laughs> but um, as you can see, I like forward curled them, didn't like them, and then tried to straighten them a little bit and then curl them away from my face again using a brush, fluffing them, making sure I'm brushing through the ends of my hair to break up the curls a little bit, make them look a little soft, and then I take large sections and I kind of just tease that for some extra volume. She had big hair, you guys, so you gotta make sure you're teasing. And once again, curling this section away from my face. And next I'm gonna take um, some glossing drops and I'm gonna work this on the ends of my hair just to kind of tame any of the frizzies and make my hair look somewhat shinier you know as shiny as dead hair can possibly look and now I'm just like primping and preening until I'm satisfied with how I look <laughs> And this is it for the completed look. So I know that I had to make the eye a little bit more involved for my eye shape, but I did just want to like reiterate that if you have deep set eyes like Lana, you can probably get away with just doing the brown and the gray and the blacks um, from lid to crease and just kind of keep it this like shape. And of course do the highlight on the brow bone. She definitely had that. But you won't have to do as much highlighting on the lids to get that effect. Of course you can because the gold does look really pretty. But like it's not necessary to get that similar look. If you're like me who I have like a flatter eye and my eyes tend to protrude a little bit more and my crease is a little bit like hooded. It hangs over my lid just a little bit, not a lot. Um, then you're going to want to do a little bit more deepening into the outer crease and then kind of doing this shape like this so that you get the similar effect and then do the gold on the lid and bring that up above where your crease sits so that you kind of, sh it gives you the illusion that you have more eyelid space than you actually do. And then of course you can do the highlighting. Um, so, but, but basically it's just like a black smoky eye. Um, Put white on the waterline, lots of mascara, long flared eyelashes, and you're good to go. Um, her skin is very light. There's not a lot of makeup going on. You can tell that she's either wearing possibly a BB cream. I don't know if those things existed back then. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I could be just like a tinted moisturizer or um, a lightweight foundation. Um, but keep the skin looking like skin. I think that that's what makes this look... In particular oh my god there's a fucking mosquito I'm back I still haven't been able to get that mosquito oh well <laughs> um, but yeah her skin just looks like skin and I think that's what makes this look um, very like Lizzie Grant and then the same thing with her lips she literally looks like she's wearing lip balm if anything she might have a little bit of like um, lip colored pencil just lining her lips a little bit but li literally just put some lip balm on on. And then um, I feel like what really makes this look like, you know, is having a very thin brow. Um, yeah, you don't necessarily have to cover your eyebrows with a glue stick to draw in some new thin eyebrows. I do like to just like put this into my eyebrows and then like pinch them so that they look thinner and you can still see all the hair so it just looks like you actually tweezed your eyebrows really thin but that you didn't and then you kind of go over that with concealer to just make them look even tinier um so yeah if you're someone that wants to kind of like try the thin brow look but you don't want to commit fully to it yet and you're not confident with like covering your eyebrows this is like a really easy way to do it um yeah it's a super simple look i think what why i like this particular era of lana so much is that she has the ability to look overly made up and undone at the same time and i feel like that's a really difficult look to kind of get away with it's really hard to pull off so 
um like her eyes are always heavily made up and her hair is usually always done and really big but um her clothes can be a little bit more casual so she might be wearing like racing jackets and jeans or she could just fully be in like a gold lame like 1960s wiggle dress and um i don't know i just i love that era of lana and it's one of my favorites although i think all of them are my favorites if we're being honest because i love that bitch but yeah and then the hair um i just figured because i'm blonde right now and very overgrown my roots are ridiculous please just don't judge me <laughs> um you know we just kind of curl away from the face i feel like this is the era of lana where you see her wearing a lot of like rollers to get a lot of volume and then the slight body in her hair um so you can definitely do that but i just chose to curl it because it's a little bit faster and as long as you kind of get like these little swoopy pieces around the face i feel like you get the effect and i have my little cherry earrings the gingham outfit that kind of matches hers in the photo and yeah it's just a super cute look i love it it's a little trashy little trailer park darling which i love and it's pretty easy oh, i swear these fucking mosquitoes <sighs> so annoyed <laughs> but yeah it's a super easy look and i do hope that you guys like try it out i don't know how many people are gonna like look up this particular <laughs> tutorial but I feel pretty good about it just because I know that a lot of you guys, like we have a lot of similar interests. So I feel like you can appreciate this look as much as I love it. So um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say. A little bit about Halloween in October. Um, I feel really bad because I had quite a few tutorials planned out for Halloween. I was gonna do a Hollywood look from Cool World. I was gonna do like Debbie Jelinski. I had my Pamela Anderson barbed wire look and I was gonna do Drew Barrymore in uh, Bad Girls. And I had a couple of looks planned out and sadly I didn't get to film any of those because I got sick with that thing that's been going around for you know a while and basically it foiled my plans i'm very happy and fortunate that i had a really really mild oh my god i swear it's that goddamn mosquito i'm tired of it um but yeah i had halloween plans and sadly because i had gotten sick um i had to make sure that i took care of myself and got through it i was very lucky to have a very very mild case of it um but it still sucked a lot and i haven't had my taste buds and smell back um like it's like halfway there but like not fully there and so that's a bit of a bummer but i'm just grateful that i got through it and like the whole house got sick so i'm grateful that we all just got through it but um yeah, sadly, uh, that did kind of interfere with all of my plans because I had all my tutorials down. And so I will eventually do those videos. I'm just going to roll them out in like November, possibly December. Um, yeah, so I am going to try to get them filmed for you anyways. It's just sadly not going to be out in time for Halloween. But I feel like that's kind of okay because I feel like on my channel, I don't really... I feel like any of my videos can be used for Halloween because I like to do uh, recreations of looks. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, I do want to say that I am feeling so much better now and I can breathe and I feel great. Like I said, I can't really taste everything to the full extent anymore or smell things to the full extent, which makes me sad. Eating's not as enjoyable anymore. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's about it. As always, I will leave a list of all the products that I use down below in the description box. And um, thank you so much for watching and thank you guys for always being so patient with me because I know I'm not a very consistent uploader, but um, you guys are always just so sweet to me and encouraging and I love you guys so much. And I make these videos for you guys because you guys watch them and you shower with me, shower me with love and um, it just, it just means a lot to me and you guys are amazing and I love you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video so it's not too long. Thank you again for watching and until next time.
Bye. Bye.